everybody thought you were going to win Olympia. Everybody thought that one year you were 100% going to win. And then suddenly Ronnie Coleman came out of nowhere. Did you expect him to come in in that, in that shape and, and win that year? Um, no, I mean, uh, nobody did. You know, uh, uh, obviously, uh, you know, Ronnie's been ex- uh, so first and foremost, the rivalry never. Me and Ronnie have always been extreme friends, uh, uh, fierce competitors on stage, but we always had a mutual respect. And probably out of all the bodybuilders, we're probably the closest. Um, so there was never no type of uh, uh, itemosity or anything like that, you know. And, and furthermore, you know, Ronnie has uh, came up publicly a billion times and, and, point, and point blank said, if it wasn't for me, he wouldn't have ever won. So I've told quite a few people everything I told Ronnie and, and up and coming bodybuilders too. None of them look like him. Uh, none of them are going to, I don't think, going to go straight eight, uh, Mr. Olympus, and not to mention defeating some of the other greatest bodybuilders of all time. That's that man's gift. And uh, he th- I think he would have been that good regardless. It might have took him a little bit longer, but that's his greatness. And that's the gift that he was blessed with. So After he won that first year and he became Mr. Yeah, Olympus I was for the first time. <laughs> 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 but uh, did you did you expect him to to go on go on that streak of winning eight? Did you see him after that first year staying there on the throne for so long? No, I mean, how do you how do you perceive that? No one had did it uh, except Lee Haney, uh, and you got to admit if you if you're a historian of the sport, Lee Haney didn't have the in depth competitors going at him like Ronnie did. You know, uh, he had probably uh, two competitors who were on his heels and. That was Rich Gaspari and uh, Lee Labrada. And, you know, uh, if you look at those guys matched up against him, you know, here he is, you know, probably three or four inches uh, taller than him. And, and I'll win him probably by another 20 pounds where, you know, Ronnie was competing against guys who are very vulnerable, you know, competitors against him. So, no, I never thought that. But I, I, I tell you the honest, God's truth is um, in uh, 90, uh, 98 when he won the first Mr. Olympia where I thought to, um, to win that one, I remember – um, the call outs. Uh, he was never called out with me because for whatever, well, actually we do know why. Um, but I remember during pre judge and I was watching him from behind. I was like, my God, this guy is freaky. I mean, why, why aren't they calling him out with us top five guys, you know? And uh, I remember, you know, one of my greatest gifts was, you know, a Christmas tree and incredibly striated back. And I remember watching him pose, uh, from standing behind him and, uh, and thinking like this dude's back is just shredded as mine, if not more, you know, they're, they're missing something, but obviously they didn't miss it for too long. <laughs> so, uh, but no, I didn't, but you know what, again, that's that man's gift. And uh, it's just, for me, it's a tremendous honor to have been on stage with him uh, during that reign. Uh, I never got the honor of standing, you know, on stage with the great, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, Never got uh, the opportunity of standing on stage with great Lee Haney, but I got to stand on stage with the greatest Mr. Olympia of all times, and that's Ronnie Coleman. So, you know, I'll keep that feather in my hat. And then to know that, you know, we were uh, great friends then and, and, and currently still great friends, man, that's just that's an honor that a lot of people can't say. For sure. Now, let's talk about Kevin Lavroni. He made a statement that he's coming back. He's training for Olympia. What, are you, what do you think about that? Yeah, you know, I mean... <clears throat> For the last probably three or four years, you know, me and Kevin have been talking about him coming back. And, and actually, that's kind of been a small circle of a couple of us from the 90s who talked to Kevin. And, and we've all agreed if anybody can come back and do it, it will be Kevin. You know, he's healthy. He didn't uh, train uh, as reckless as we did, you know, every day. I mean, Kevin would take extreme times off and, and stuff like that. So um, I'm, I'm ex- um I'm excited, and I can't wait to see what he can do. And um, I think it's really had breathed some a breath of fresh air back into the sport, you know, because it was kind of a, you know, a, a Kai Green, uh, you know, Phil Heat type show, and whether you know Kai is going to show up, and then you know maybe Dennis Wolf or this or another. But Kevin, I mean, he brings an extreme, um, you know, different degree to the game, and I think that has really uh, inspired a lot of people to come back and. And look at our beautiful sport again. You know, just hopefully he can uh, come in at uh, close to as best as possible, and and not let himself down or the fan base down. But I can't wait, man. I'm gonna be there front and center to watch. Do you think it's possible for him to to come in and look up to par to to the top guys right now? Do you, do you think it's realistic? If Kevin comes in 90 percent of his best, he's going to do some damage and hurt some guys' feelings. Now, that's a what if. If he comes in 80 percent, he's going to get handled by everybody. But 
you know, Kevin has ability to uh, beat, to, uh, defeat great athletes in his 90 percentile. I, I was never at 100 percent. I was always, you know, somewhere in the 90 percentiles and I fared out pretty good. So, you know, I think he will too now that what if is if he does or not. And probably within 30 seconds of him walking on stage, I'll fully understand what he's going to be able to place in because it's nothing's going to hide now. Obviously, he's not showing everything, but, you know, that's what bodybuilders do, right? They only show their best body parts. You know, they don't show their weak body parts. So how can you really make that type of assessment? It's definitely exciting, I think, for the sport. But, you know, recently I spoke to Sean Ray, who's a, I consider him to be like an expert, you know. He he's definitely has his, uh, you know, he, he's very well-rounded when it comes to bodybuilding. And he, he is concerned for Kevin because he thinks it can be very hazardous and dangerous for him to make the comeback at that age, you know, uh, training at such intensity. But do you see it as actually being dangerous for, for his health to make a comeback at this age. You know, the great thing about technology and knowledge now is it's completely different. You know, um, back when we competed, you know, we, we took in, you know, 1 to 1.5 grams or 2.5 grams of protein per body weight. That's not even necessary, man. You know, the body can't even assimilate all that, you know. So, and we went in and we banged hard every day regardless. It's not even necessary. The body is proven. History is proven and technology is proven, you don't even have to do that. It's worse. You know, uh, You know, the body grows when it's resting, not when it's training. So you don't go in and bang every day. When's the body going to grow? You know, so there's so many different things that's been learned now that you just don't have to. So I don't think he's going to be in no harm whatsoever. Uh, I don't think Kevin's going to put himself in harm. But is it dangerous? Of course. It's dangerous for a healthy guy. Uh, unfortunately, we lost plenty of healthy guys in our sport who had no problems whatsoever. A lot younger than Kevin, too. So to say that, is, is it dangerous? Of course it is. Don't be stupid. Could it happen? Of course it can. Don't be stupid. You know, so for Sean to say 100% he's in danger because of his age, that's really? Uh, I was part of when Sean said he was going to come back. Uh, it's back when I was living in L.A. and, you know, he's training because I'm come back and compete. And I'm like, no, you're not. You know, you're not going to be able to do it. And he's like, yeah, I am. So he was training hard, you know, um, cardio and everything. And I said, you know what, Sean, I go, that's all easy. It's all great to look good in clothes. You know, it's great to diet and everything. I go, but trust me, bro, when you got to go back into that mental mind frame of those deep and dark places in that diet where you know you're going to have to take your clothes off, I go, that's when you're going to find out who you really are. And he couldn't do it. I mean, it's a, just a different mind frame. It's great. It's, it's easy to walk around and look great in a shirt or even taking your shirt off. But, dude, strip down, get up on the stage with the best in the world. Yeah, now you're really talking. So... Uh, he hasn't given in yet, so that's just, a, again, a what if. But, uh, again, just because um, his, his age and everything, is he in danger? No, that doesn't put him in danger. Uh, the sport is just dangerous. And, and let me step outside that, if you allow me. Um, it's not just the sport. Any sport uh, where you try to be the best in the world is dangerous. It, you know, you have Olympic uh, decathlon uh, people running, and they're puking while they're running. You think they're healthy? You think they give a damn about being healthy? No, they're trying to be the best in the world. You know, uh, you want to take kickbox, uh, kickboxing, boxing lessons in a gym just to kind of learn how to move around and stuff. Great, that's healthy. You want to top fight Mike Tyson? It's not healthy about that no more. So, any sport when you're trying to be the extreme best, it has very little to do with health. It has to do with the best in time, uh, the best that you can be. So, now Flex, what, what did you take on uh, how the sport progressed after your retirement? And I know, you know, a lot of people complain in, you know, nowadays, the fact that everybody's so big and, and, you know, the size increased by a lot and bodybuilders are huge now. But in a way, you know, Ronnie Coleman and you and, and guys in that era kind of started that trend, you know, obviously from, from where Lee Haney left off, then you, Ronnie, you know, you kind of started that kind of like the size monster aspect of it, right? Um, so how do you look at today's bodybuilding and um, do you like the direction that it went after you retired? As far as now, I, I don't think the guys are too big. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, there's nobody who's wearing Ronnie's uh, size and height and weight uh, doing as well as he did. I mean, I, I competed from uh, 230s to the, you know, 257 at, at 5'10 and a half. There's, there's nobody uh, that size or Kevin uh, in his size uh, either. So the guys are a lot smaller now than they were back when I was uh, competing. Um, but, you know... I think they're just as great as, as we were. You, you can't match, you know, uh, do a match uh, matchup like that. That's like saying, you know, the what if again, what if Bruce Lee fought Muhammad Ali? It's never going to happen, man. It's a great talk. 
but it is what it is. So, I mean, I, I have a tremendous support for, for all the guys, Dexter Kai, um, you know, Phil, uh, Dennis Wolf, uh, you know, Ron, uh, Big Rami and all those guys. I have tremendous respect for those guys and what they're doing. And I think they're doing justice with the sport, you know, um, you know, so um, I don't I don't look at it as a, a negative thing. It's, this is an era that we're in and it is what it is. What do you think about the whole Photoshopping craze that's happening right now? You know, it's like... Uh, don't want to get too weirded out, but it's about like bragging to a girl that you're all that in bed. And then, then eventually you get her in bed and she finds out you're really not all that. That's more embarrassing than just being the honest truth. And, hey, this is who I am. This is what I have to offer and except for me for my myself or not. But, you know, that's, that's just the generation we're in. You know, something that I didn't talk about until I was forced to uh, once I got a lot worse. But, um, you know, basically, you know, I was a performance uh, horse, you know, and I was kept in a stable and I was paid to perform. And, uh, you know, realization hit when I simply just got in a car accident. You know, I broke my neck in a few different places. And, uh, you know, while I was in the hospital, my contract was taken away from me. My